Do you, do you know I absolutely forgot to do, by the way? I forgot to fucking introduce you. So what we're going to do with the absolute beauty of editing magic, I'm going to introduce you right now, and then we're going to say, Zupa, back to the present, right, or some shit, right? Because <laughs> I forgot Wait, to say Wait, have we what? been recording this whole time? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. You just get through everyone in the shit now, Dwarf. Oh, my day. Um, God, uh, got him. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that, because I was going to ask you something that... All right. Should go off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just saved myself. Let's go. Mm-hmm, Amazing. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Uh, this is Mr. Stephen Lee. Today we have here with us. Mr. True Severi. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's welcome, a ple- man. How's pleasure. It going? Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a long time coming. You know, I'm glad that you finally started this. Uh, you know, like uh, I see you all the time and I just wish you produce more content. So it's so good to see you. No kid- you know, uh, when we first met, I think I was doing a podcast, and I was on. Uh, you were on that actually. Really? Uh, yeah. How long? Oh, with, uh, with, with Jenny Cardet, Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, that, mm-hmm. oh, that was great. Oh, I remember that guy. Amazing. Yeah, we did yeah. that on live as well. God, good days. That was a, that was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, like, see, actually thinking about that actual podcast with Jedi, um, there's, like, so many people I had on that, like, I could just get back on and be, like, new people because it's been so long since I spoke to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. I think that that's what's going to be so cool about this podcast is, like, the fact that um, I can just have people that I know and I've kept in touch with, but I don't really know anymore. Like, I've seen them from an outside glance or whatever, here and there, DM them, but not actually had a proper conversation. Mm-hmm. So... It's, Absolutely. It, I'm excited for it. It's been a, it's been like what three years now. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's three years. I've I started streaming on in May, so yeah. So it's about then. Uh, but I mean, realistically, I didn't start meeting people until kind of the TwitchCon November, October. So yeah, it's oh. uh, I'd still say about three years though. Realistically, you know, I was watching a lot and. Yeah, it was, it's, it's good, nice. man. Like, there's a lot of a lot of people as well that I see that are even just like my cousin. He's really big on TikTok and stuff. Like, I want to kind of explore outside of just Twitch streamers. You know, I mean, th- yeah, n- you're not necessarily branding yourself as a Twitch streamer, are you? Like, you're you're a homie that's a creative. You know, like there's stuff that yes. you do that's just different, but you also do stream. You know, it's there. It's just part of it. I think it's been a couple of months since I've streamed. <laughs> <laughs> Best streamer out there, though, bro. Halo Extraordinaire. Super Mario Bro Stonker. You know? <laughs> Smash Bros. <laughs> also, I just realized I totally just doxed my girlfriend. Oops. Oops. Uh-huh. Well, no, it's all right. Well, we, can, we can change that, dude, don't worry. <laughs> um, Sorry. I, I just, I just in... go. Boop. Uh, she lives in Canada, actually. Like, yeah, yeah, you're sa- you're saying, bro. Like the, the the northwest of Canada, right? Somewhere up there. Mm. I don't know. Some, yeah, is like, it Manitoba like or some bro. shit? Like yeah, the whole place. She's like way yeah. up there, bro. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. great. You know, just oh. really on the outer reaches. Yeah, right. Speaking out there, of Canada, oh, where does that fucker stop? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Does it not eventually become um like Nor- Norway and shit? I don't know. How does that work? <laughs> Fuck, it's, like, it's, all, it's all the gala on it like the, the antarctica is its own continent so everyone owns a piece of it though so there's like a there's a weird shit going on there dude okay know. antarctica is on the southern part of the globe i mean uh, i'm in arctic <laughs> yeah, i'm in up it yeah so well, wait, wait 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 so how the fuck does that work at all then yeah i'm an idiot because uh, Ar- i remember arctic equals attic that that's how i always remember and i just completely fucked it there ah uh, yeah okay no so canada owns that entire like Aside from Greenland, obviously, they own that entire landmass up there. But, like, Norway's in the Arctic, too. So, I don't know. Is well, it just, the like, the Arctic other side of the world? Like, it is the other side of the world, isn't it? But it is, but it's close, because it's ice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, obviously, they are flat, but, like, you know, like, looking past that, then you can see that it's quite specific. Yeah, I mean, the Arctic is just, like, a, a line that's... Oh, my God, I don't... It's been too long since I've been in school, dude. Uh, a, a longitude line, yeah, right. Yeah, along in the corridor and up the stairs, right? Doesn't that work? Like you go left to right first and then up long latitude. Yes, I think it's it, right. Like <laughs> the Arctic is just a latitude or a longitude point at some point, right? Like... Yeah, yeah. Oh god, I think we just need to go exploring up there at some point, man, and see it. Absolutely. Uh, see okay, it. that shit. Like, uh, I don't know. It, like. Arctic explorers are fucking crazy to me, dude. Oh, I love it though, man. It's gnarly. They'd be able to like rock up there and go to the poles. Well, like that's the thing, dude. I have such like a a fear of like immobility. Like I mm. don't want to be like a frostbitten, be <laughs> covered in like p- 
pelts and pelts of shit, dude? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I got you. See, I don't I, know. Like, I think it, uh, what, what do you think about like climbing up a mountain then, compared to that? Like if oh, you, I love climbing mountains. They're right. so much fun. But it's it's it could be similar scenario. You're still like super like padded up uh, up a mountain trying to stay alive. Oh, you're just going up. You're just not necessarily. Okay, I'm gonna nip this in the bud. I think climbing. What is it, dude? I'm I'm frustrated. Mountaineering. Dude. Mountaineering. <laughs> Mount, Mount Everest. It's such a All fucking right. moronic expedition. Like oh yeah, fuck fuck dude. Everest, man. Like that's that's dumb for now. It's Jesus. It's like pianos and shit up there now, right? <laughs> it's just like oh, the, the, there's more like human shit on there than anyone it's done in Scotland. Like it's it's crazy. Like the the lines mm -hmm. that you have up there now, it's just pure. I don't know. It's just like a highway of people. Too much hype these days, bro. Too much hype, dude. Exactly. Um, I always thought K two was cooler. The second highest. <laughs> I'm gonna expose myself real quick. I did not realize Mount Everest was in Asia. Really? What the fuck do you think it was? Like Europe or something? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's like the Himalayas. It makes sense you know? that it's like, right. Yeah, like that's, it makes sense. that's like the highest area of the world, right? Well, actually. You have to realize I'm working on like American geogra geography. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's true. true. I know my continent. But, but you can't even barely. point to Northern Ireland. Like, or do you even know what Wales is? <laughs> We are just like the animal, bro. <laughs> okay, so like that's the thing. I I I know the most about America, and since like knowing you and a handful of others from the UK, it's like yeah, the okay. second I'm most about. Yeah, that, that's kind of hacking though. Then, like, I wonder. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is though, is I couldn't necessarily name every state or point exactly where they all are. You know, um, but is that necessarily know, some important? You don't know country? where Rhode Island is. Uh, uh, I, I know that there, there's that movie, Me, Myself, and Irene, and that's where Jim Carrey's character is based. That's what I know. Really? Uh huh. Yeah, I did. He's like the, uh, I saw the police guy. I saw the I saw the preview for that on Hulu recently. Oh, dude, I highly recommend it. Like, my big brother bought the DVD ages ago, and it became my favorite Mystery. movie. It's so funny. It's just like, it's like Jim Carrey and he's like peak, man. It's just, and he, he's like got schizophrenia and he comes to different people. Uh, just what, like real life. Right, exactly. <laughs> I know. But what a what a method actor. Um, I feel bad for saying that because like, goddamn. Yeah. Like, that, that's just like the dangers of, uh, I guess, overexposure. Like, you become so famous to a point where you really just get to live in your own world. And yeah, then, like, for sure. And it's accommodated. It's not even like you celebrated. get to live in your own world. You're kind of forced to. You don't get to live a normal life at that point. No, no, exactly. Like, uh, he, I don't know, like the whole Truman Show shit as well. The fact that he made that and then yeah. he, like, exists within that. But, and then just mm -hmm. imploded. I don't know, man. That's a... Dude, that's a I had a that's hard crazy to... fucking dream once that was like based on the Truman Show. No oh, fuck. Like, uh, yeah, I was like back at my high school in Parsons, and uh, Parsons, like, Kansas, represent. Yes, sir. Parsons, Kansas, <laughs> shithole USA. <laughs> got, oh no, yo, you got the big <laughs> MF in there, man. He's a legend. You know, Matt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I won't. I won't expose. I won't expose. <laughs> Dude, I don't. He doesn't care. M A W C. He's gonna, he's gonna keep on going on in his own world, anyways. Oh my god, dude! I was watching Otto uh, stream his tweets last night. <laughs> oh my god, I was in tears. It was just going Hold like. Up. Let me read my favorite Matt. Tweet. <laughs> uh, you got that shit saved. I, I have it unlocked, dude. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm listening. If you send okay, me the screenshot, I can put it up. After, after. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is inappropriate, and I don't know the the rating on this podcast, but she uh, goes a tweet. I'll, I'll pull it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm trying to be gay or straight in the gym, but I'm not even working out. <laughs> I'm straight up gargoyle in the shadows, creeping for no reason and leaving the weights all fucked up. Oh! Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Dude, what a chat. <laughs> this guy. I love that that's been spotted 15 minutes after as well. You're fucking unlocked. You actually are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that's that's the beauty of it. Like, there's so much of his, like, I guess, content. Like, that's about it at this point. Where it's just like, all right, yeah. Like... This is just a guy who tweets every single thought that crosses his mind. Yeah, yeah. Not too interesting all the time. But then you just get moments where he's like, 
stoned out of his mind, I'm guessing. Yeah. And he's just, you know, on a fucking roll. He's just finding those pure gems, man. I'm telling mm-hmm. you. That's that's it. A- like, another an recent enigma. favorite. Exactly. Oh. Another recent favorite is oh, let's Cock go. of Duty with the Boys Tonight throbbing <laughs> in the battlefield. <laughs> Yes, dude. I'm gonna start just saying that. Yo, you want to throw up in the battlefield to that place? You yeah. know? <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. that's great. Cocky duty tonight, fellas. <laughs> Bro, like the fact that uh, like all of his tweets, like you were talking about his interaction, he doesn't care about it. He's just pure spewing out content, man. He's just oh, like he's and, getting his. It's yeah. so inspiring, really. To be honest, that's like, the great. thing. Like nobody interacts with it, but yeah. people are talking about it. Right, 100%. right, right. I like when he knows that. He understands how big he is, man. He's just like, he's feeding the fans, you know? That's he, it. Doesn't, he doesn't need the gratification. He just fucking knows. Mm. Exactly, Yeah, so man. what? This is hidden. I don't care. For sure. I mean, I did a prayer to him on stream. Remember, I took my time and properly gave, like, you know, kudos to him. It was great. You know, he's he's really, you know, got a large breadth across the countries. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. He's Dude, spreading he's content. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And he's buff. And he plays guitar. I mean, this guy, man. This oh, guy. my. Yeah. But he has the craziest character arc I've ever seen. <laughs> well, what, what was he like in high school? In high school, he was just this fucking, like, scrawny stoner kid who was literally <laughs> high 24 <24/7. laughs> 7. Like, walking out the halls of Parsons High School, fucking blasted. Dude. Died his face. Love it. Mm-hmm. And but like he's always been crazy good at art. Mm. Uh, we had a we had this art teacher that was like she was interesting, but she definitely played favorites. Like I really enjoyed her because like I, I was one of the only people who could actually draw in my class. Right, I get you. And like uh, she like said the most like I guess just heavy thing to him mm. that I've I've ever heard. She said uh. Matt, you have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. I just wish I could see them. Oh, wow. Whoa. Yeah. Holy shit, that's a bombshell, dude. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, then I'm- very very descriptive of him, I'd say. Yeah, so beautiful. Wow. And, like, she just gave him the most free passes. Like, you know, <laughs> there's always assignments in these classes where, like, you're supposed to draw this, draw that. Yeah. That dude didn't give a fuck. He was... <laughs> Drawing whatever crossed his mind, usually aliens and them smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go, dude. He's just exploring his inner mind, his third eye, uh-huh. baby. Like, yeah, I I can't ever say that I was on that uh, level, but I remember once we were making model creatures, and uh, it was like kind of I don't just model faces uh, in art class, and I remember specifically the art teacher, Mister Onstad, telling me, yo. Like, everyone here has to make sure that the hair is the same color as the face. And I was like, yo, fuck this anarchy. I drew it in, like, b- big blue, like, as bright blue as I possibly could. And I still have that fucking model in my room. Well, it's in a box now since mom and dad have moved. But, like, I, I still have that just to, like, present anarchy, dude. Like, I just, <laughs> I always have that now. It's great. I-, I love it so much. And it's got, like a like, a hole in the mouth. Like, I... I kind of like burrowed out his head, um, and I could like hide money and shit in there. <laughs> it was cool. Oh my god! I-, I loved it. It was just so interesting. That's incredible. I don't know. Like I-, I loved art class. I used to like skip classes. Um, like say like I don't know, home ec or uh, computing or something, and like sit in the art class. And the art teacher liked me enough. He didn't give a fuck. He was like, yeah, what is what it is. You know, if anyone comes in, I'll just uh, I don't know, s- say that he was having a chat with me about something. And I, I never got called up, and it. it was fine. You know, all the teachers didn't give a fuck about me because I didn't care about their class necessarily. So they didn't necessarily mind about me um i loved it though it was mr c was the guy and uh oh, yeah. it was good man it was just like he'd always have like good music on like foo fighters bob dylan and stuff like that and i just i really liked the whole vibe of his class it was just like uh, far yeah, better than anything awesome. else yeah i was always like i had uh, my music teacher my art teacher and my religious and education and like f- it's like uh philosophical studies teacher we called it like rmps what's it stand for religious moral uh philosophical studies uh, that's what it is and like like he was from south africa that guy and i fucking adored him man he was just so interesting he'd always just like i don't know like create such intrigue and actual good storytelling for all these religions whereas we had like a fill-in teacher every once in a while and he was just so boring we just read from the bible or the fuck you know it's just like that's not engaging at all um 
I wasn't. I never was converted to any of the religions, but I really liked uh, Buddhism. Like just the way it was so more resounding um, and just a lot more healing. Like compared to the others, which are a lot more like do this and you will die. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, you know, <laughs> it's very binary and like shooting you down. If you're gay, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. COVID nineteen. Like you know all that yeah. shit, bro. I fucking adore that video so much. I have cried multiple times. COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. Have you seen the song as well? I uh, blow. <laughs> oh it's amazing and then like um the, the other one with that lady it was like i hear the sound of victory did like all that shit have you seen that one? Oh, it's so yes. good it's like for big for big dt did like, uh, so it's just insane to me how like fuck man like i think there's a lot of good that religion can do to people just right. like because like i mean fuck dude like if you've ever been in West Virginia, those people have two things, and it's it's meth and religion. <laughs> Love it, dude. That sounds like a well, great if, concoction if not, of life. If you're not high on one, you're stoned on the other. Like, <laughs> I, like, like I don't know. Just in places where if you don't have anything else going for you, I can see the like need for like escapism. Like mm. Right, right. Realize, like something that tells you there's more to life than just working at a coal factory. I got you. Is is West Virginia flat, or is it? No, it's beautiful out there, man. Oh, is it nice? Okay. Uh, like the dude, that countryside is gorgeous. Like mm. loved and hated driving through it because like you're like just kind of like in the thick of the uh, the rocky or the what the fuck am I saying the Smoky Mountains? Right. But then. Like, you stop for gas, and you want to, like, crawl out of your skin. <laughs> Just, like, the people don't match with the environment. That was going on. I mean, they, they do, because, <laughs> like, that's that's what it is. It's really I mean, and shit. Yeah, I, I can see where you're coming from. I don't know, like, for me, like, whenever I think of, like, mountains and shit, it's very different. It's, like, the old-school, big-bearded Scottish guy that's, uh, you know, like a drunkard that's amazing at hill-walking. You know, like that, that, that's I, I think a sheep and stuff, you know, that it's just different. Mm -hmm. But so like the crazy thing is, is like the the gas stations, and this is just my main reference at this point, but mm -hmm. like the gas station we were at was like, like a fucking straight up vintage gas station. Like I was surprised we didn't have to pump our own gas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually kind of always wanted to do that. Like to be kind of interesting. You know? Yeah. And like, so you go inside and like, the shelves, like, you've seen what the shelves are like in America. It wasn't anything like that, dude. Like, it's mm. just, like, empty shelves. There's not any, like, there's not hardly any branding or anything. Like, everything's just sitting in the cardboard boxes that came in. <laughs> just get what you want. You know, like that kind yep. of way. Just, just pick it yourself. Actually, hold yep. on. See, when you say pump your own glass, do you mean that someone would actually, you wouldn't have to get your car? Is that what you mean? No, I mean, like... <laughs> Or, or do you like, like physically it, pumping it? Yeah. yeah, I was thinking that, like physically pumping it. Yeah, okay. Because like I know that that's a thing in America, right? People will actually put gas in your own car for you. Like that's creepy to me. Dude. I I don't I don't like that. Um, I don't know. Like I, you think they might overcharge you as well? Like how how could you? Because mm -hmm. well, I I mean, like uh, on you. I the, I think the biggest culture shock to me, uh, being in like bigger cities was like going to like like being in like a, a concert in new york city and then going to the bathroom and there's a guy who like puts soap <laughs> in your hands that's it do you, you. do you want a paper towel sir like that guy yeah yeah yes mm. and like you're supposed to give them a tip like these are just homeless people like you know mm. trying to make a living dude it's it's you get that in like yeah. glasgow clubs as well though like that's that's prominent it's weird. Yeah, it, it was. It's fucking amazing though, because they also have like mints and stuff for you to take as well. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and there's like aftershave. But the thing is, is they'll like spray it on you first, and you're like, "Fuck off!" Right? You're like, "I'm pushing the guy off, man." And he's like, "Pay me." I'm like, "Fuck off!" No, <laughs> you know, like he's like expecting me to give him like after this assault he's just confronted me with. He's expecting me to then pay him for it. I just, I'm like, no chance, bro. You, you take contactless, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've actually have we talked about this. Like, I swear down that like uh bombs and homeless people are, are like fucked like i never carry cash anymore like i mm -hmm. i legit haven't had 
Um, I'm trying to think the last time I've actually utilized, except from like maybe like for our trolleys here, so like uh, the push carts, um, we need to put in a pound like in order to unlock it, and then you when you put it back again, it's so that people yeah. don't steal them. Um, you get well, your right, pound back. Because that's you know, shop at Aldi's, right? Yeah, well, like here is the co-op in Tesco, but it's the same thing. Like oh, uh, they're all they're all the same shit, but. Yeah, so that's like the only really time that you use coins. Um, and actually, this kit, this actually fucked over Adam and I recently because neither of us had any money, like uh, pounds, but we had our cards and we had to do a big shop for mom and dad for like the Christmas stuff. Um, we we're like, fuck. So <laughs> we just had to rock in with like four baskets. Like, fucking go! You know, it's yeah. absolute full stone baskets, man. And it was fine, but it worked out. But um, yeah, like that's the only time, dude. Um, the thing is, though, I've noticed like the older generation still obviously utilize. Uh, uh, notes a lot because at, over my birthday I just like from like uh, my family members around like you get you get a card with some notes in it so you know I've got like some 20 quid notes that I don't know when the hell I'm going to use but they're, they're just there <laughs> yeah. you know uh, so at least I have that even just Dude, to right? use money right now it feels like it's too much touching you know because mm-hmm. there's no, w- you don't know when I have cash it's like free money to me yeah right I know what you're saying it's a, it's a weird thing right yeah I remember uh, my yeah. mom thought it would be all the way around with me growing up. She like I remember her saying that like it's better to have cash and like notes so that you can see how much you're spending. But like I don't know. I feel like I know exactly how much is on my card. I know what that number is. I know how to take it away from whatever I'm buying. Mm-hmm. And it's like I th- that's easier for me compared to like if I've got coins and stuff. You know, it's it's odd how it works that way. But, yeah. yeah, I always used to piss my mom off a lot because I just always hated change. Like, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have like you know dollar coins here, but like. Dude, <laughs> I would literally just throw change away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's just gonna fall out of my pocket anyways. Mm. Like, see, I, I literally like I I hated the clinking of it. I hated the weight in my pocket. I hated everything about them. Yeah, no, I get you. Yeah, I remember like my dad had a bottomless pit of coins when I was growing up. Like that was just a thing. Like in his pocket, he'd always have coins that amounted to about a bit of fiver. It was, it was never a fiver. It was always about a fiver. And then you could go you could go and get a couple cans of juice and, like, some sweeties for that, you know? Um, it was just mm-hmm. always a thing. I remember that. Um, but I, I don't know. Like, that's just changed so much now. Like, my mum and dad are going to sell the house and all that. And, you know, obviously, that's all going to just gonna go straight into the bank. And I can't imagine they want to take any of that out into cash at all. Like, it's just going to stay where it is. So... It's mm-hmm. it's odd. Like I, even like in America, like you see in films and stuff, like it's always like in cash, in cash. It's always like a big thing to say in cash or whatever. I I don't I'm not I don't think that a big thing. Like I don't know if that's just an old film thing or if that's even happens nowadays. Like when people say like oh I can give you it in cash, is that better? It's like why would that possibly be better? Is it tax or what? Traceless, baby. Traceless. Yeah, I can see that. I suppose. But like, there's you get like um like takeaway places here like say like chinese or fish and chip shops or whatever and they're all uh cash so um, I, can, I can see what so that is one of the reasons why is because i don't know if it's this way in scotland or not but uh some businesses get charged for like processing electronic charges mm, I, i'm fairly certain that's what happens here because the the shawarma wrap place that uh, I used to stay uh, when when I was staying with Greg, him and I would come home steaming and we'd always go and get a shawarma wrap. And every once in a while we'd fucking forget that it was cash only. Like fuck, so you need to walk all the way back to the cash machine, which was back in the centre, and then come back out again, um, just to get some food. You know, even though it was right outside the flat, because you didn't have money you in the flat. You mean at eight a.m. At eight a.m. That's it. That's it, dude. I actually taped that in. I, I remember, like, uh, I I taped it in and like I showed. <laughs> Like it came, I just asked me like, "What's an ATM like for my map?" I was like, "What the fuck?" I had to put cash machine. Um, I don't know if they fixed it now, but fuck. You mean the auto teller? <sighs> Shut the fuck up! Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. So, what's going on later on tonight? You're going to be playing uh, Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons. And Dragons, baby. Are fuck you, yeah. you still streaming that in the Discord? You still doing that? Nah. Nah. I mean, like, I guess we could, but yeah. like. I mean, like, I, I think it's just nice to hang out and watch it. You know, it is kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, even, even if it was live stream, but I, like on Twitch, but I don't know if you want to do that, if it's too much. Uh, um, that I mean, would be fun, but that's a lot of work. I mean, is it? I mean, it's just the same as going live on Discord, no? But I don't know. It, it is what it is. Like, I, I, you would never expect to have chat interaction on a Dungeons & Dragons stream. Like, at least I yeah. wouldn't. Like, if you are, then you're being very high horse, you know. That's a bit mm-hmm. silly. Uh, do you remember the 
the characters we ran into at TwitchCon who were very invested in their Dungeons and Dragons campaign that they were streaming. Yeah, I don't. When when was that? Like where? Where about uh, was it in the convention? I can't. No, no, no. They were they were some of the people that we would hang out with outside of the convention. Oh, I don't know if I would have name dropped them. I feel guilty about that. Oh, fuck. Specifically because I don't remember one of their names. <laughs> Jesus, I'm trying to remember. Like, where the fuck did we meet them? Were they my friends or your friends? Nah, they were uh, Lindsay's friends. Right, I'm trying to remember. I actually can't. <laughs> I actually feels a lifetime Dude, they, ago, they bro. Were, yeah, it literally was. Uh, no, they were at the, uh, the other Airbnb that we would frequent. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about now. That it's that was a different world. Uh, that yeah. was. Yeah, that was that the was something weirdest else. shit I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, uh, the main thing that I had to latch onto that night was the fact that I had a Modelo in my hand, and I just had to keep like I don't know. That was my grounding thing. Was that beer? Mm-hmm. I was like, this is the only thing that's going to get me through this because I'd had a Modelo back in Scotland. I was like, I'm, I can't be gone already. You know, <laughs> this is not just some mad country where there's random people around me. You know, I had to like keep looking at you and Lindsay just to like keep remember what was going on. Yeah, that was yeah. Uh, that was fuck, man. Uh, that, that I, awesome. So much information then, just slamming into you. Good. Yeah, yeah. When's the next Dude, time we're gonna get an opportunity like that? Fuck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, don't know. I I've never been more appalled than I was at that Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. I was a oh, fuck man. I don't even remember how far away that was from the place we were staying. Like our, I mean, was fuck. There was just so it's many. Like a mile, I think. It, it felt like it was all in the same place. Like it was just like a street or two, but it was mm-hmm. more than that because I remember that you got an Uber and stuff to go there, but it just felt all like kind of one situation because everything was mm-hmm. new so i didn't never knew where i was it was just was no, absolutely you know, but uh my... that was where I, I think i've been my most defiant ever was at the airbnb um so some clown had the audacity to start slandering <laughs> tarzan <laughs> specifically phil collins like yeah. you don't talk shit on Phil Collins and Tarzan, dude. No. That dude went fucking ham. <laughs> that dude went above and beyond any necessary means that he needed to for that soundtrack. And this motherfucker says, "Um, actually, fuck Phil Collins and fuck Tarzan." <laughs> I I got up and fucking left, dude. Like you just got the fuck out of there, dude. <laughs> I literally did. Like I was like, okay, I can. I can handle you being weird as fuck right now. Yeah. Can handle the fact that you're doing a Scottish accent for the second day uh, in a row. Yeah. But Phil Collins slander is where I leave. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I can. I just remember you standing up and saying, "No, I'm out." Yeah, just going. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "All right, I'm out." Yeah, you. Just, just feel fucked off, man. Uh, that was brilliant. That SpongeBob meme was you. Yeah, that was just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, fuck. That was a great <sighs> time, though, man. I'm still so pissed you didn't get to go to Twitch headquarters with me. Um, uh, yeah. I like, mean, like, granted, I wouldn't have appreciated it I, as I much. Know, I know, I know. I wish there was more I could relate with you on that, because it was fucking unreal. It was just, you could really mm-hmm. see the Amazon money. I don't know where the fuck happened to that Amazon money, but, like, after <laughs> the fucking dismay that Twitch me then. Um, but, yeah, it was it was remarkable to see. Like, just the, the beer on tap was the one that really got me. And you could just That's stream. Crazy. You could just like a gigabyte upload, you know. And you could just yeah. You're like yeah. That's not, I mean, that's wanted. what I have now, my dude. <laughs> Fuck you, dick. <laughs> dude, I'm still running on. What is this? It's like sixty down and twelve up here. So, but it works. It's, it's insane to me, like how much money there is in that shit. Mm. How much do you pay for your internet? I pay seventy bucks a month for my internet. Yeah. See, this is only twenty. It's like 20 quid. So that's like, what, $30 or something like that? So really not a lot. Yeah, that's, that's not But bad. I suppose if you're getting a gig, but it does make it a lot better. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, it's very usable. It's stable as well. It's not like it's fluctuating at all. I've never had a dropout that hasn't been like a really odd time, like say like three in the morning or something. Um, and it, Yeah, no, it, I've, I've now run into the problem where... Um, my internet is no longer the throttle. Like it, it just depends on how fast my hard drive can save things. <laughs> you jammy bastard! <laughs> I'm like, that's it's, your problem. Wow, dude. Yeah, it's it's not a problem I ever expected to have in my life. Yeah. Wow. Well, because motherfucker, dude, I went from having like 
like we're talking about megabytes here, right? Uh, I went from having 0.6 down mm. to 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. That's just, yeah, like you wouldn't even be able to compare that. That's just like on and off right there, dude. Mm-hmm. Like that's, yeah. I remember like growing up though, like when I used to upload YouTube videos, um, I suppose I'm doing that now still, but it's different. Um, like well, this is like ages ago when I was about 12, 13. Um, I remember like a 500 megabyte video would take about eight hours to upload. Like it would just take all night, you know. I would, I would leave my computer on overnight yeah, just to geez. upload it. Uh, yeah, and like now I can upload that even with this shitty internet in about less than an hour, you know. Um, which That's is crazy. Incredible. I mean, obviously, with a gig upload, it's you know a couple minutes, and it used to be like that in uh, Glasgow when Richie and I were together. We had a lot better internet, but um, this was just internet that was already here. But it works fine, so I don't really need to do anything to it. I might upgrade it slightly. Uh, I know I can get a hundred down, but it's only like a couple quid extra. Probably worth it, I think. Um, but yeah, man. So, are you doing any more art uh, projects and stuff? What's going on with that? It's been great to get to see what you've posted inside the rat discord so far. Just... Depression. Depre- <laughs> I, yeah, but it's a great utilization instead of sitting in your bed, oh, okay. bro. Like you're it, actually not... creating okay, something cool. I, I'm not so much depressed anymore as I am just fucking anxious 24-7, dude. Right, right. Okay. I'm going to be honest. It fucking sucks not having a job in a pandemic, dude. You're right. I can understand that. Like, uh, yeah. I think we're, we're routine animals, but, like, we get pissed off when it's someone else that's dictating the routine. But, like, I don't know. It's hard because you, it's really hard to build one whenever it's in a pandemic and everything's shut down. And, Dude, uh, it's no crazy. No one's do anything, you know? I think the weirdest part for me is just, like, my sense of time now is completely skewed. Mm. Like, three hours passes in a fucking drop of a pin. <laughs> yeah, I get you. For sure. Just like, uh, I'm really realizing that by um, when I feed my cats, because uh, I'll feed them in the morning, and then before I know it, I'm feeding them at evening. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, they, like, they pester me just as if it's the morning again. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, I, I, that was a full day that just went by, you know? And, uh, you know, now I need to feed them again, like, you know, eight to ten hours later. Just yeah. unreal. I've, I've been sending you so many pictures of my cats, haven't I? It's good. Oh, dude, I fucking <laughs> love it, man. Yeah, they're so, I don't know, like, I'm the only human here, so they're very much, you know, right in my face, trying to see what's going on, and feed me, feed me boy, you know, feed me human, um, it's cute though, man, but they're, I don't know, they were fucking pissing and shitting inside, um, and they're outdoor cats, and it was getting really annoying, like, they were doing it in trays, but then afterwards, like, they were peeing in the hall or something, and I just had to be like, look, this is it, you know, you're older cats, you're mature, and so I literally just, you know, walked out with them and closed the door in the cat flap, and just, uh, spent, like, an hour outside with them at, like, four in the morning, it was, <laughs> it was super cute, man, but, like, at the same time, they just had to have that space where this is your outside, stop being little fairies, you know? Because I, I don't yeah. know, like they're just, I know there's other cats around here, but you know, they're decently sized cats. They can kick the fuck out of them. I literally was shouting at them saying, go kick the fuck out of that cat, you know? <laughs> like, you know, I was so angry at them because they just, you can't, like they're 12 years old or like one of them is, the other one's about 10. Um, and it's just so annoying that they're not, they're not listening to go for a pee and shite outside, man. It's just so simple. Oh, um- you know, but um, they're better now. They I are getting there. So I mean, yeah, like it's definitely like a territory thing. Like yeah. they're getting comfortable in their their new area. Yeah, for sure. And like uh, there is some decently sized cats around, um, which I've seen. And the one of them actually tried to get in the cat flap, which is kind of sick. <laughs> uh, like uh, I was cool to see it because like uh, my big boy was like. Rrr! Like that noise they make, uh, and, like, and then the other one was like doing the exact same from outside, and then I obviously just intervened, um, just to like stop it. But it was kind of sick seeing like two. I don't know, like I, I love how it, they think they're ferocious beasts, right? But like the, you know, imagine a jaguar oh, yeah. doing that to another jaguar. Like that's some proper fucking fighting, you know? Mm-hmm. They, they think they're big as fuck, and then like a human like scares them away. I actually always thought about that. Imagine. Like there was something around you right now that fed you, kept you warm, um, and that like made you feel good, and then it picked your entire being up and gave you a cuddle, like <laughs> all of you, and you had no say in it. Like that was it. That's what a cat is like to yeah. us. Like, we can so easily manhandle them. Like there's no, there's no issue like picking up a cat. Like no matter how big they are, you know. I mean, dogs are obviously different, but cats are teeny in comparison. Yeah, dude. Like I'm pretty goddamn sure I'm just a, a human-sized cat because like. <laughs> 
having my movement constricted in any way, shape, or form just mm. like causes, causes my brain to short circuit, dude. Oh, I get you, dude. I I remember I fell down the side of my bed once, and my uh, brother jumped on top of me, my big brother, and I couldn't move mm-hmm. my arms, and I completely freaked the fuck out. Like I became yep. an absolute like ah, oh, I just mm-hmm. imploded, man. And like, yep. I, I, uh, <laughs> I think that gave me like claustrophobia for a bit. I was just, I was just fucked up. I couldn't deal with uh, not being able to move my arms. Um, I'm a lot, I'm much better now, and I can like, you know, sl- like I don't know. I, I, I'm good at going. I don't know, like necessarily thinking about. It. I haven't done much caving, to be fair. But like, I don't know. I, I'm not scared of small spaces. Like it hasn't become a thing, which is fortunate, I suppose. Um, but yeah, like I just hated that shit. Uh, but uh, as I got older and more stronger, like, I was, I was kind of more competent myself and didn't need to worry about my big brother constricting me you know so, yeah dude mm-hmm. no are you, are you you're the youngest right your family yes I right. am. yeah so you get a lot of that shit growing up. well uh like there's one specific time where that shit happened to me and uh there's a little story behind this uh okay. so do you know what bronze rigor is no i don't know how to spell this bronze okay Liga. sounds german um I, th- I believe it is. Um, yeah, it originated in Germany. Um, it's a type of sausage, and let me find a picture for you. Yeah, I'll click it. You send me any pictures of your sausage, I'll click that. Oh, I didn't even see your art. Dude, fuck. I didn't see any of that art. No, that, that's not mine. This is all Matt Fraker's stuff. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, my so, God. Like, I, I, I was about to say some shit. Like... I was going to start talking shit about it. <laughs> 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 I was just showing like uh shit. Oh, I like this one. I uh, like the, the one that just says shit. And, stuff, and oh, then the yeah. bottom few are just like showing this dude is fucking talented. Dude, this one's like Van Gogh quality. The one with the like the yeah. green bottle. Isn't it, dude? Oh my days. Like, what the fuck That's like is sunflowers, that? man. Like hold on, like sunflowers mm-hmm. by Van Gogh. You seen that shit? Yep. Some good flowers. Oh my days. That's like yeah, that, they're they're similar. As fuck, what, dude? That's like a, it's like still life is what you call that, right? Yep. Um, oh, that's amazing. Did like, like these the shadows well. are incredible. He's done so well on that. Fuck me. Yeah. As it's, much as this guy's a meme, art. he's an artist. Like he's a. No, that's the thing. Like this dude is a fucking force of nature. He's something else. Wow. Uh. So okay. So Braun Schroeder is this like disgusting sausage that's like i think it's really fatty or something but uh anyways there was a bit like when we were younger we used to get like um crackers cheese and summer sausage it was a really yummy treat that we used to enjoy okay and uh one day we had brown sugar as well and i was like oh you know it, this is gonna be like summer sausage so i i tried some of it but like i wasn't in my head i wasn't supposed to i don't know if that's true or not <laughs> but um Anyways, like later I was with my dad and my brothers and uh, my dad was like, hey, do you want to try some of this? And I was like, fuck no, that shit's disgusting. <laughs> and he goes, well, how would you know you've never tried it? Yeah. And I was like, well, now I'm in a bind because I, I have, but I, I don't want to let you know that I have already. Right. <laughs> um, anyways, he like, I don't know, was feeling, I guess, Henri or something and took it upon himself to like, have my brothers hold me down and try to force feed it to me oh my god and then i just like started fucking shrieking dude like <sighs> right my brain short-circuited and they were like were like what the fuck is your problem dude oh jesus dude. Like, just believe me when i say i don't want to fucking eat it <laughs> true <laughs> fucking hell man that's that's some uh yeah that, that would cause me to freak the fuck out as well like just being pinned mm-hmm. in like that i mean like we've had like kind of like uh, the three brothers and my dad just have like a I don't know, kind of like a, a battle, like, but it's not like we're actually trying to hurt each other, but, you know, fight and stuff, and then one of us gets trapped, and then you realize someone's in, like, in pain or struggling, so you fucking get out of there. But, like, yeah, that's scary, dude. Especially force-feeding. Fuck me, man. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. I never, like, tussled with my brothers, because, like, my, like, flight or fight response is to just, like, kill or be killed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it should be. It should, you know? Yeah, like, uh... I realized like I sh- I'm not one to fight because like uh, I had pissed my brother off one day and like I was like on my back on the trampoline and he started like running towards me and I like kicked him in the kneecap and fucked his leg. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
I don't think we should be tussling, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I we used to have these massive fights on a 14 uh, foot um, trampoline of like six people or so. Um, it used to be like a proper like ring fight, man. It was unreal. Uh, it was, <laughs> this is like how we just got toughened up growing up. And I remember yeah. I was fighting this guy called Craig and he was three years older than me. I was about, say, 15 at this point. Maybe not a bit younger, probably like 13, 14. So he he was obviously just stronger than me because of age and that, that time. And uh, I, I was putting up a good fight, right? But then he did like this insane jump and got so much power behind him and drop kicked my fucking kidneys, dude. <laughs> Like my actual kidney, and like Holy I was just shit. down, man. I literally, I, I couldn't move, and I was in the most extreme pain I've ever experienced. Dude, oh I like he immediately regretted it. You know that feeling whenever like you're mm-hmm. you're, you're fighting someone, but then you really regret it. Like if you're fighting I your brother, oh, that was exactly. me when I kicked him in the kneecap. Yeah, for like... sure, right? <laughs> it's it's oh, it's an awful thing. We've also, I remember, I was um. <laughs> I had to go home for my dinner, and my friend Ewan uh, and I were on the trampoline, like jumping around. I said, "Look, I've got to go with my dinner. Uh, I'll be back later on." And he was like, "No, I don't want you to go." But as I was getting off, and he drop kicked me off the side, and his dad's boat was beside the trampoline, right? Uh, like there was a net and stuff there, right? But I was outside the net when he drop kicked me through the net. I bounced off his dad, his dad's boat, right, and then fucking land off the concrete on the bottom. <laughs> I was just completely <laughs> fucked. <laughs> I like I, was, I ran away home, you know. Trampolines are just like the greatest home invention. Like, oh, they are, dude. That's nah, just so fucking dangerous and absolutely incredible to jump on. No, oh, you, you learn so much in them, man. Like I, I oh, cause because yes. I was one of the smaller boys. Um, I could like get that way where if there's more than one person jumping, you can kind of like jump and land just after uh, they do, and you just go fucking flying. It's something about mm-hmm. the way the net is. It's so much more taut, and you just go ding like super high, man. Yeah. It's unreal. Uh, yeah. it's so so much uh, fun, dude. We, we like didn't have a net around ours. We were just you know free base. Psycho. <laughs> um, but when we got a little older, like not really old, like well, not old enough to know better, but old enough to be angry about it. Right. We like dragged our trampoline and put it beside our garage. <laughs> oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> and we would just fucking jump onto our garage. Wow. And we thought our dad would be super pissed about it, but he yeah. saw us one time. He was like, "Oh, hey, I don't care if you do that. Just get one of the like the carpets from the garage and put it on, so you don't fuck up the shingles." <laughs> oh, what a guy! Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. And uh, we like we would buy these uh, like three packs of water, like gallon water jugs, mm. and um, they worked really well if you flatten them and then uh turn them into like sleds so you could slide off the carpet on the on the garage oh uh, my days that's so sick i love that dude it was so much fun we used to get like um you know like tea trays that you would like put like saucers and shit on or like plates or whatever Uh or or you'd set it on your knee we used to get those for sliding down a massive hill uh the like every uh winter with just to go down in the snow because we were too poor for sledges (laughs) yeah dude. (laughs) i was unreal but like i actually preferred them over sledges because they were just quicker and they were more mobile you know uh (laughs) it was it was so much fun dude I remember trying to like turn my skateboard into a snowboard. I was like, yo, this is totally possible, right? You can just take off the wheels and it's fine. You know, and the first thing that happens is like it just digs in and you go fucking flying down the hill rolling, dude. Oh, man. So much fun. Like, like, see, it's wild. Like, I went up to that um, hill recently. Um, it was actually, there's like a, a rock at the top that looks like an elephant from afar. It's really quite cool. Um, and my granddad used to take me up there. So since he passed and stuff, I wanted to go up and just have a wee dram and talk to him. It was nice. Um, but like, I didn't realize that hill is barely a fucking hill at all. But when I was younger, that was massive, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I remember, like, we drew a massive willy in the snow on the bottom of it, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and you could see it from the top. And it felt like you could see the whole world, like, the entirety of Scotland, you know, like, from that hill. Yeah. But, like, going up there, it is still a decently high, and you can see down the loch in that, but it felt like it was, you know, hundreds of meters tall rather than only being like 30 or 40, you know? So, yeah. it was, and it wasn't, it's not, certainly not as steep as I used to remember, you know? Dude, but yeah, like, it's crazy. It's, you totally have the same thing when you're like driving through like hilly places as a kid. You mm. feel like you're like going through a roller coaster. For sure, yeah. You, it, you get older, you're like, oh, it's just a fucking hell. 
Yeah, I know. So, so I need more extreme things, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I am like the number one advocate for like human sized playgrounds. Mm. Like, for adults that would be so much fucking fun dude like see um the monkey bars and that my brother and i used to like just like k- just kick around with some beers and go to the monkey bars at night it was great crack you know <laughs> that was just I, a, yeah just a thing that like monkey bars are so much fun there's something about that that's like so it's obviously monkey it's like primal as fuck you know it's just good <laughs> it feels good to like walk along with your arms you know absolutely because you just don't do that shit in regular life obviously you know so it just feels good I, I don't know, but okay, I agree. That's so, actually a great crack. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, I'm kind of looping back here, but uh, you guys don't have Burger King there, right? No, we do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Did you guys have the ones with like the play pens and stuff, like the the playgrounds inside? A, a playground inside a Burger King? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh dude. do you mean like like oh you mean like the the indoor like slides and shit? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had that shit. Yeah. Okay. For sure. So. You know, like the I thought you meant in like a Happy Meal or some shit, but that, that's part of <laughs> McDonald's. I was like, how does this thing fucking fall out? Yeah. <laughs> oh like, yes. Yeah, it's an entire playground in a Happy Meal. Not, yeah, exactly. Uh, you bro. know, like <laughs> the big like loopy uh, slide that was like um, like closed in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the best thing that you could do on those was take like the lunch trays you got and then use oh those as a sled. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that would be unreal! Oh my yeah. days! Yeah, no, that's that's. No, you're, you're talking about your teachers, and I was like, "Oh, we've done this." Yeah, no, honestly, it's a universal kid thing, man. Like you just. Uh-huh. Oh, I have another story. It was uh, we went to Ireland once, and uh, it was just us in the play park, like my brothers and I. Um, and uh, we were sliding down the slide. It was in summer. It was glorious, beautiful weather. Um, but the slide was kind of sticking a bit. I think it was just because it was so sunny, it was so dry. So my mom went inside the little Airbnb we were at, or wherever it was, and got some polish and covered the whole fucking slide in it. Right, oh, so. Well, there was absolutely no friction anymore on this slide, right? And like we started flying down, and like you would just hit the bottom and soar. You would just keep going, <laughs> like you know. <laughs> and because you're so light and small, you keep going. But then after that, the best part was all of a sudden out of nowhere, all these other kids appeared, right? They didn't fucking know there was polish on the slide, <laughs> right? So then they all start flying down, and my mom's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> she's just like killing all these children, you know? They're all like flying into the tarmac, bro. Oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> I love all that um, shit. Yeah, we used to like uh, take pledge, like you know, wood polish, and just like. Mm. Spray our fucking wooden floors with it. Oh, put on socks so. and go zooming. Yeah, oh, fly around. Yeah, that that's that, that was what um. Never every once in a while, my mom and dad would like, uh, know, go go away for a weekend, and my little brother and I would just uh have the house together, and like we always had the the wooden hall floors, and we'd always just like do that, like see how far we could slide and like make championships. Yeah, it was great crack, man. <laughs> Dude, all the crazy shit you used to get up to as a kid when your parents were gone. Oh, like, dude, just. Like stuff now that you just be like, who the fuck cares? But, like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Some one thing we shit. would do was like uh, start the washing machine and then like uh, open it up, stick a spatula in the safety lock, and turn it back <laughs> on, and just watch all the suds fucking fly everywhere. <laughs> that, that's wow, that's anarchy itself, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Just like I don't know, dude. That's great. Because as an adult, you'd be like, "God damn it!" Now I have to clean all this up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like for I'm trying to think what we would do. Nothing like that. But like I used to climb in my house a lot. Like like up onto the roof, like the very Fuck, top of it. Yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't a flat roof. It was just like a bungalow. Um, but we lived in a hill, so like you could when you, once you got to the top, you could see really far down the loch and stuff. It was amazing. But my cat That's started awful. following me, so <laughs> I, it was so cool. Like me and the cats would just hang out in the top of the roof. Uh, I remember Hell that yeah. shit, bro. Um, yeah, it was good. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. I don't know. Just climbing, climbing mad trees is what we used to do a lot. My friend Ewan and I, we'd always challenge each other to see how far high we could get. But um. As you can imagine, the taller you get up a tree, the thinner it gets. So mm-hmm. both of us, you know, climbing higher and higher and higher as the wind starts to pick up and as the swaying starts to get more and more, oh you know, God. and we're both like, trying to like outmatch each other. So we're not backing <laughs> down. It was fucking great crowd. We never fell. I rem- I was thinking about that. Like we literally must have climbed tens of trees, like different trees, like hundreds of times, like over our, like growing up, never fell or, and maybe like a wee fall, but nothing major, never, never broke any bones or anything. Um, 
I don't know. Just when you're a wee kid, you've got upper body strength and grip, right? Mm-hmm. It's just just is what it is. I mean, I still feel I've got quite a decent amount. Like whenever I went climbing and stuff in Glasgow, it was so much fun. Like I really enjoyed doing that. Um, I don't know if you've done much of that, like the free climbing stuff or uh, climbing with the big ropes and that. Any of that stuff? Um, I've gone like bouldering before. It's a lot yeah, of fun. it's good, right? Um, is, is that like indoor bouldering or outside on rock? Yes, yes, indoor. Right, right. I find like hiking and stuff, and like I don't know. I would love doing stuff like that, but uh, mm. I don't know. I just haven't really had the opportunity to. Yeah, I get you. Like, I, we, Greg and I did it before the pandemic. Uh, we did a lot of it. Um, it's been closed since. I mean, you can imagine sweaty people touching the right. same things. It's not gonna open anytime soon, you know. Uh, which yeah. is a shame. So, but yeah. I just sent you a graphic, and it's like it's crazy to me how like we feel fucking invincible when we're a kid. But it's like goddamn near true. Uh, the risk of death for five to fourteen year olds, oh my god, uh, annually is one in ten thousand. Like, wow. it's the lowest you'll ever have a, a risk of death. Like, <laughs> and you're doing crazy shit all the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. When is this year though? Because I like if when this was made might change that. Because I reckon we had it better. We were more free. Like a lot more kids are kept in nowadays. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, uh, yeah. I like because I mean, I don't know. Like thinking about it, yeah. Like I used to go cycling without helmets all so, the time down like tarmac hills and all that yeah. shit. You know, that was just a thing. You go, you go on a scooter, you like, you know, skateboard down hills and shit. Like you just wouldn't give a fuck. Like no helmet. You know, it just wasn't what it was. Dude, yeah, I think there's a significant like a, a significant role that like fear plays in right. your proneness to accidents because like. Yeah, and like the more aware you are of just like life-threatening shit, like when you're a kid, you don't fucking care. You're not yeah. thinking about it. You don't have the capacity like, to think like that, man. It's just yeah. like you are as you are. And I don't know. Maybe it's just because like you're still young as fuck. Like your body heals in a couple days. Mm. Have you noticed now that we're older, like wounds take fucking ages to heal, and it's only gonna get worse. <laughs> Way to be inspired. Yeah, no, uh, I agree. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of like my most major cut recently. Oh, yeah, uh, when I was outside, actually, I can still see the scar. Um, when I was, it was actually on Christmas, uh, just after Christmas Day, um, I was cutting up some uh, kindling, which is like, you know, like for a fire, you know what that is, right? Just like sticks. Um, I was chopping it up and like uh, one of the splinters went right in me and it like sliced down my right thumb. Um, and like usually that would heal within, you know, a few days or something, but... I can still see it, you know? It doesn't hurt anymore, but it's still fucking there. And that, that's like, I mean, almost a month, you know? <laughs> Three weeks. Yeah. It's crazy. Dude, yeah. It's, it's nutty. I mean, especially hands. The, those ones take the longest to heal. Yeah, I suppose. Like, what, what's Dude. been your most gnarly cut? Or have you broken a bone or something? Um, I've never broken a bone, thankfully. Yeah, uh, same. Touch with. Believe it or not, my hands, I think, are the most fucked up. Uh, my right pinky. I don't know if you've ever seen that. You might but, have seen uh, It's been like... I think it was like broken maybe once or twice. I just mm. I just had a series of jams mm. and never went to the doctor to fix anything with it or anything with it. Right. So now it's just like fat with a pH. <laughs> like it, it, it's the size of like I don't know, like uh my ring finger now in width and I have very like thin hands. Right. So like it just looks like another knuckle from my other hand, and then the rest of it's like tiny. That's and it wild. like, you know how like your fingers have like a cap to keep them from bending back too far, mm-hmm, unless mm-hmm. it's double jointed. Yeah, it's gone. Like you can just bend back as far as it wants. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Yeah, I not, not not at the like the knuckles, like the top ones, like at the first di- digit. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, don't, it's. I, I think like hands are always going to get the most injury, right? That's always mm-hmm. going to be the thing. Like, I think, especially if you're practical, like, and you just do things. Like, for me, um, I have, like, I actually, I forget about them because they're not as evident, but I have a lot of cuts in my thumb from sawing branches. Because um, that used to happen all the time. You just, like, you'd be sawing, and obviously you're holding the branch, yeah. like, with your hand and, like, your thumbs underneath it, and it will slip and it just catch underneath it. And these saws are going to, like, there's not chainsaws. It would just be, like, you know, hand saws. So yeah. you will put some force in there, but you'll obviously stop yourself because you know it's fucked up. You're like, you kind of pull it back. You're like, oh, shit. Um, so, yeah, I've got a few cuts in my thumb. I actually remember distinctly, it was, um, it was just me. It was, like, say, 
I don't know, November or something. So there was no tourists at the castle I was working at. And there was a garden that are obviously cutting trees and shit. And uh, I had the buggy. And inside the passenger uh, glove box was where the med kit was. Um, but when I cut my my thumb, it just was pissing blood, like, everywhere. Oh, I was all uh, down my arm and everything. I was having to roll up my sleeves. Like, obviously, you've got, got a jacket on and shit. It's fucking awful. Going everywhere. And I'm, like, trying to hold it, like, trying to get into this glove box. Covered everything in blood. It looked like a murder scene, dude. Um, and I'm... <laughs> Eventually got like uh, some bandages and just like held it on it until it stopped bleeding to then patch it up because there was no way I was getting a plaster on that. Um, but like looking at it now, it's a tiny little bitch ass cut. You know, <laughs> it's nothing. But in that moment, man, it is unreal. Like how much blood is coming out of you. It's crazy. Yeah, goddamn. I've I've got that other one. I think I maybe have told you about that. Like on my uh the my marriage finger on my right. What would you call it? Your wonky finger? What the fuck? The one beside your pinky uh, on your right hand. Right. I don't know. Is that ring finger? Yeah. What is it though? Is that not your left? Your left when you put it far? Anyway, this is my so my ring finger on my right hand. Um, I was upside down in a polytunnel, and as I was trying to be Ezio Auditore di Firenze from Assassin's Creed and do some badass shit, I uh, caught my hand or my part of my finger on a bolt, and it just ripped right into my skin, dude. It was this. Oh, oh I was so gnarly, and like. It, honestly, like, I should have went to the hospital, I never did, and it's like, I don't know, like, say half a centimetre, like, thick, like, down, down my whole finger, um, it's quite gnarly, like, how big the cut is, like, it was just a gaping hole, I could see my bone, like, it was <laughs> mental, dude, but I never, Hi. never went to the hospital, <laughs> I just wasn't yeah. it so, oh, I see your picture um, here, what's this? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this, uh, it, apparently it's just your right ring finger, uh, Affiliation. It, yeah. Oh, that? Is that like for your guild? It's, it's my favorite one. Fucking personal statement. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I, I'm part of this, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, I love that. Like, so my my worst uh, hand injury, uh, I sliced a good chunk of my my left index finger off when I was a kid. Oh, uh, shit. Back when we uh, did you guys like incessantly play with toy guns? Yeah, dude, we had like cap guns and shit, like uh, and like you know the ones that make a noise. You probably couldn't mm-hmm. do that in America. You probably get shot. Like, <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you actually use those? Uh, Fuck. Uh, no, like I actually never gave a shit about cap guns. We uh, mm. just went from like toy guns, like ones that you pretended to shoot. Mm, yeah. Sometimes they made noise, but nerf was, guns and stuff too, and that kind of shit. Yeah, it was like late nineties. That wasn't really out yet. All oh, right. Uh, and then we graduated to BB guns. Oh, yeah, see, we had a stage, but it was more like the kind of fucked up kids that would uh, come in with those. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, you get those various few, like, more yeah. hardcore kids that had the parents didn't give as much of a fuck. Um, there was those that would then teach us how to do this stuff. Because, um, like, my mum was an actual teacher at the school. So, like, I couldn't get away with a lot of stuff. Um, it was a bit like that. So, that yeah, I remember uh, Jock and, what the fuck was the other guy's name? I can't remember. Frankie. Jock and Frankie were their names. So yeah. they, they, they were our guys, our go-to gun sellers, you know? <laughs> like, See, like, I don't mean to be insensitive here, but like... Oh, God. Those are the people that grow up to be criminals. No, like, I agree. Oh, 100%, bro. I'm, so, like, I'm certain they've served I, time. <laughs> like, don't... Right, no, what I'm saying is like, you can always tell your kids to like, be better, do better, like... Uh, okay, don't, like, assault women, obviously. Like, that's who the fuck in their right mind is going to do that. Mm. But, like, those aren't necessarily the people assaulting women. Like, that's... Yeah. Those are the kids that you pretend don't exist. Right. Hmm. I don't know. It's like, it's either that or go to the army. Like, it's one or the other. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that, 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 I... And then, been like, speaking of, that. of, why do you think all the Marines in Scotland are dickheads? Right! Fuck, dude! Uh, no, for sure, though. Like, what, what, what's this shit with the Marines, though? Apparently the Air Force were amazing. You think they're just, like, off of the high um, of World War II? And just, like... Well, it, it, I think it deals, like, directly to IQ. <laughs> like, <laughs> I suppose, uh, you yeah. Have, you have to have a higher hazmat score to get into the Air Force. Mm. And it's more prestigious, oh, right? I just said hazmat. Oh, my God. I think it's ASVAB. Yeah, ASVAB. <laughs> All right. Whoopsie. I don't even know what that means. So... Um, <laughs> I just assumed see. it was some test you had to do better. Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. All right, okay. An aptitude test? Is that it? Just like... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be just shorten it, bro. You know? We're not as five-fight as that. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Right. 
No, I, I just... will never take one of those tests because, like, <laughs> I my okay, my thing. I love taking standardized tests. I think they're the easiest thing in the world. Like, right? ACT, SAT, shit like that. Like, oh, it gets my fucking rocks off. So, like, feels bad for all the kids who, like, you know, are mortified of taking tests because I love that shit. <laughs> but like, if I did take the ASVAB, dude, the military would never stop blowing my line up. <laughs> Is that how it works? Like, it's all connected. Oh yeah. Fuck. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I remember in school. I, I'm, like, on I'm like prime target for the military, dude. Like <laughs> low income, low income kid <laughs> right? with like you know a brain. Like, yeah. The, they want me. <laughs> Uncle Sam wants me. <laughs> Uncle Sam wants you. Uh, I I can understand that. Like I remember in school, like those booths that would appear uh, every once in a while. I think it was like just before Easter and shit like that. It'd be like the army booth. Or, like, reserves and stuff. They'd always really push hard. They'd be like, do you want to be a man? Do you want to have a real life? You know, they'd really try and mm -hmm. convince you that way. And now, like, uh, I just got really pissed off. I remember it was, like, a, an advert that said, um... <laughs> well, I can't remember the exact wording, but it was basically, like, you've got a good KD, join the army. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? You know, it's yeah, just it, 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 like, like, and they were like leaning into like army esports and stuff. It's like, whoa. Like, it's just all. Okay, like, dude, I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat real quick. To, Bro, the reason why like Activision and like, I guess, AAA gaming companies don't give a fuck about kids playing their games. Dude, they were 100% desensitizing you to like armed combat. Like, yeah. I swear to God, if you were to pick up a gun right now, you would know how to line up the iron sights and shoot a target 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, for sure. I can, yeah, 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 yeah. I can see that. I mean, certainly, yeah, I, do you know what actually scared the shit out of me? And Richard, too. It was when um him and I were trying to shoot a spider. It was awful. It was absolutely, I know, animal cruelty. Get me fucking done here. Right, we're trying to shoot a spider with a Nerf gun. Couldn't hit it. It was five times. Gave it to Emily. She hit it first time. <laughs> right and we were both like what the fuck is this thing you know <laughs> this yeah. little terminator bro oh and like she she i don't know i don't know where she learned that but she just knew how to aim shit up and snipe <laughs> i was like what the fuck man That's incredible. Uh, and like we hadn't had any beers or anything it was just you know we're just hanging out it was crazy but no no i, I, I agree with you like there is a lot of desensitization desensitization i can't fucking say that word uh but yeah no for sure like i I don't know, I'm trying to think of people that have gone to the army that I know. I mean, there's quite a lot of them, and like, they don't necessarily seem to have had much combat, necessarily. It's like a lot of them dropped out or whatever, but I don't know. Do you know people that have actually gone to the army and like stayed in there and actually have a big thing in it? Or um, how's your... the army. I, I know a guy in the Air Force. Who right. like, I mean, they call it the Chair Force for a reason. Like, he's a fucking IT guy. <laughs> the Chair Force. Yeah. No, heard um, of but, like, dude, the military in the United States is just predatory as fuck. Mm. Like, why do you think we're not giving our poor people health care and, like, affordable wages and stuff? Because, like, or, or like, affordable college. Like, yeah. why do that when you could promise them, like, hey, join the military, you get free insur health insurance for life and did, we'll also pay for your college. Did you say that recently in the Rat Dog Central? Mm, yes. Because I, yeah. when I was through uh, talking to Maureen and that, like, uh, I brought that up about how... Because um, they were like, we don't understand why the Marines are like that. Like, why were they so such arseholes? And I was saying, well, like, their other choice is prison or a shit life. And, like, so going into the army, it kind of, like, just create, turns them into, like, I don't know, just killing machines for healthcare. Which is something very odd to think about, right? Uh, how that's, that's an answer. But, like, I remember, like, I read what you said there and I was like, fuck, I never thought of it that way. That it was just it's for benefits and for your family or whatever to help. Otherwise, you know, but well, imagine that decision... You know, like to have to go to war to help yourself. You know, it's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, like that's why there's so much like glorification of it. I guess, like, right, right, right. Goddamn, dude, we love our war movies. We love Call of Duty. Like, yeah, sure. I, it's not like it's not a like. I guarantee you, it's not like a. Well, gotta feed my family. I'm going to war. It's like, uh, well, I don't want to live on the streets. Mm. Uh, you know. I don't really fucking care if I have to kill somebody or not. Like, let's just, dude, people in America are ready to kill another person at the drop of a hat. I swear right, to God. Right. It's already there. It's already instilled in you. Yep. Like, it's mm. not like, oh, uh, I'm not giving up my guns. It's like, oh, if, like, you get shot, like, why didn't you have a gun? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See that? 
I mean that like that's always been an age old thing, but like it's it is mental like the difference between um whenever there's any form of conflict in the UK or Europe. Well, it's, Europe's a little bit different because the police do have guns, but um the people have a lot less guns. But the UK, it's both. So, you know, uh, like things are resolved via batons or fists or just words. You know, like that. That's it. So, <laughs> fucking batons, yeah. you're all right, mate. Get your fucking get a fuck off that. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> such as that. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen like I, I think like football, like hooligans and shit. You see some of that. Like um, I remember seeing a guy uh, stealing. He was already in a Celtic kit, so he's already got one. But he stole one. It must have been the new kit from a shop, and he's running out from it, right? And the security guy's running behind him as well. And this other one comes out of nowhere and just fucking pile drives him right into the side, right? And I, I was thinking like, how would that be resolved differently in America? Like if it was a mall, you know? And I don't know, like. Like, is there more chance of, like, I can't be fucked running against this guy, I'll just shoot him in the leg? Or is well, it, you know, like, how does that work? Because, like, it the- depends. Like, 100%. First of all, are you white or black? Right, um, yeah. Second off, like, uh, I, like, how much did you steal? Mm. Uh, also, like, I don't know. If, like, the whole thing is, like, resisting arrest or, like, av- avoiding police. Like, right, yeah, yeah. If you do that, you're, you're, you know, a, a a a fucking terrorist at that point. Mm, mm. No, that's I don't know, man. It's oh, he ran. Time to kill. Mm. See, the only time that like we ever see guns is in the airport. Like that. That's it. Like re- realistically, uh, you, you see them like kicking around with like MP5s or I don't know, fucking MP5Ks. Or, like the, I know the guns from COD. <laughs> it's like I see. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's got that. I wonder if he's got the attachments. Like, you know, fucking silencer, monolithic. I don't know what the fuck he got. You know, but I don't know. It's always like that's the only time you'd ever see them, and you feel you, I don't. You don't feel intimidated. You feel like they're on your side. Those guys. Like it's there's a difference there. Um, like I, how often do you feel like the cops or the military are on your side in America when you see them? Like is that um, like do you feel safer? Never, yeah, right. Never, and it's because uh, I am a criminal by nature. <laughs> but your medicinal like, habit is that exactly well that and I don't like not only that but like dude from a kid like you're taught the police are not your friends. Like, yeah, see, that doesn't happen. Not there for your well being unless if you make above a hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm. Oh, bro, that's. It's just pure cold blooded business, like right. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's not personal. It's business. Hmm. Because like my mom has literally uh, multiple times had the the police in to talk to the kids, like to teach them how not to be, like you know, because say someone steals someone's bike or something that happened recently. Actually, someone stole someone's bike, so they brought a policeman in to tell them. Um, like th- this is like before the schools got locked down again. Um, just to say like uh, why this is bad, and then the the kid ended up coming forward, and he was super like heartbroken against it and stuff, and he was taken aback, and it was because of that police presence, and like. And the policeman was super gentle, just came in and like, obviously once you see that big uniform and stuff, like especially as a wee guy, like that, that means a lot to you. You're like, holy shit, I need to listen to this guy, you know? And I don't know, like it's just like his approach. If you came in like shouting or whatever, that you would completely, you'd be scared of them rather than have an authority or respect, you know? Um, mm-hmm. th- I think that's the difference. I don't know, like th- there's not never a brute force or show of force and strength. Unless like, I mean, I know that there's some guys, like my little brother's mates, um, whenever they drive around in their cars and stuff, uh, like around the main street and stuff, and they're like ripping up, going, and they're like, like it's just around in this tiny little place that's got like three roundabouts and all that shit, and then they complain that the police pulled them over. And I'm like, you fucking serious? Like, you're asking for it at all times, man, and then you get pissed off when it happens and then call them cunts? It's like, come on. Like, there's that... There's that mentality. My big brother did that too. I never did it because I saw where it led my big brother and I was like, fuck going down that route, man. So I just, I obviously did my weird shit. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, my, my big brother's fine and stuff now and Adam isn't wasn't as bad as him, which is good enough. Um, yeah. But yeah, you could totally so, see, you could see like the change. I don't know. Like, I've definitely um, fled the police in my life. Right. Um, I saw by like from house parties and shit, but never yeah, like, exactly, yeah. yeah. I've never like fucking robbed a bank or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I've never I've, committed a felony. I'm trying to think of like something crazy that I've done. I think the worst thing I ever did was I stole a bottle of lemonade from the corner store place we had. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't my fault because I was coming back from school and this wee guy who's um 
I don't know if his mum was in or something, but he, he walked up to me with a bottle, it was a two litre bottle of lemonade and gave me it. I'm like, fuck yeah, thanks me, mum. <laughs> Just walked on. <laughs> I was like, fuck it. And I, then I like, I thought of it later. I was like, this sweet guy was like four. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way he went and bought that. I was like, "Fuck it, well, I've got lemonade now." Uh, <laughs> so it was what it was. But like, honestly, that I've just never, except from like you know, like I don't know, online piracy. Like, there's never been anything that I've yeah. done that's like crazy. Um, of course, I've never done any online piracy. That's just a joke. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I pay. For, I pay for my Disney Plus. You know, you know how yeah. it is. Speaking of that, have you watched any Mandalorian? Any of that stuff? Um, I've watched um a little bit of the first season. Yeah, and I, but like. The reason I used to hate television uh, is because nothing ever happens. Mm. Uh, and, like, that's, that, I don't know if it's changed now, but that's definitely, like, episodes one through five in The Mandalorian. Like, yeah, there's a lot of build up. Nothing, no, it's, nothing, it's, nothing it's, happens. Like, yeah, it's a lot of uh, be- pretty vistas and stuff, you know. Yeah. But the other thing is, like, it's fucking, it's cool as shit. Like, yeah. that's fine. Like, I the- want to see the, but by by far and away the um I, I know it's a wee way off if you're only first season but like this the last episode of the second season is unreal like how it ties things up it's just really cool um but is I, it finished at that point uh I don't think it's done I don't I, I don't, mean I don't hope so right but, they'd be clowns if they were like they're making crazy money from that right now yeah exactly and like they're doing the Obi Wan Kenobi thing soon as well uh with you McGregor back again so. That'd be cool. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, it's uh, like he he just looks the same. Like uh, if, if anything, he looks better <laughs> because they made him look older when he was that age. So like oh, you know, yeah. so he looks more oh, like Obi Wan would. That What's that? You broke up there. Oh. How old does that man? Oh my god, he's only forty nine. That's not bad. Yeah, bad. yeah. I mean, he looks great for it too. See, I always it's yeah. mental though. Like, I I think it's a difference. I mean, I don't know if it's just good genes or whatever, but it's also just looking after yourself, um, like making sure you don't get too 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 fat or let let your body just like not know what cardio is, um, as you grow older. Because like if I compare you McGregor to my dad, <laughs> you know, and like my dad's only <laughs> six years older than him, I'm like fucking hell. I just like it, it helps it, to like be successful at an earlier age. Yeah, and you got a lot of money to keep yourself fit. I understand mm. that. Um, and also the the stress is a lot less. Obviously, you won't have to worry too much about rent then. So I get that. Yes, but like also you're just much more aware of like keeping up a healthy lifestyle because you have an image to upkeep. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. But yeah, it's, I don't know if you saw him in uh, Fargo as well. I don't know if you watched that. I I, <laughs> I, I fell in love with Fargo, man. I fucking adored it. It's just like yeah. Yeah, like the the last season though, I think we talked a little bit about that and the rat dog. Uh, a little touch was it in the rat dog? I think it was. Is it currently ongoing? Uh, I think it just finished the season oh, four. Interesting. Um, uh, no, I haven't been watching it, and I'm a little disheartened to start it because is it mother? Yeah, Billy Bob Thornton's in that shit. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. I don't know. I don't know. Like, for me, I honestly need to rewatch it to appreciate it because I watched it when it first came out, like Fargo. Like, I watched it like well, a long time ago. Like, I can't remember when that was, but it was like I was, I think, just left school or something. It was really early on. Um, but yeah, like the the fourth season feels like it's trying really hard to be uh, Boardwalk Empire in the fifties, which is just odd because um, yeah, it doesn't feel like Fargo. It doesn't feel like the same experience at all. It doesn't feel like there's much murder going on. It doesn't feel like there's much uh, conspiracy and uh, who's the suspect, who done it, like why done it. You know, there's none of that. Like, it just feels like it's, I don't know, gangsters, which is just weird because it's not Fargo, you well, know? What is Fargo about? Well, I mean, I would say like the main thing is it's got like a, a mystery, black comedy, a m- like murder. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know, kind of, kind of it's weak. It's based in the 50s. I didn't realize that. Yeah, well, some of it is. Like, it jumps around. So, Minnesota, I think that one's, like, 90s? 2000s? Like, the first season? I think it's quite quite recent. And then, yeah, the other one is as well. It's 2000s. That's the one Ewan McGregor's in. And the guy, I always forget his fucking name. He's in Boardwalk Empire as well. Um, r- really, really cool guy. Uh, but, yeah, he's, he's like, uh, Ewan McGregor's, like, under guy. But it's so weird to hear Ewan McGregor with uh, a Minnesota accent. Because uh, <laughs> he doesn't do American accents. That's like his first time, apparently, when he said it. So That's funny. It's either English well, or Scottish, you know? Uh, have you seen Doctor Sleep? No. Um, you've watched The Shining, surely? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, he plays as adult child in. Oh. I don't know what the kid's name is, but he plays as the adult child. Is he, in, is he American there? Yes. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I just read that wrong. I don't know. Well, when when was that out? Doctor Sleep. Um, twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen. Right. I don't know. I think Fargo was before that. It doesn't matter. No fucking way. Okay, twenty nineteen. All right. Cool. I mean, I think it was before that because it was only well, I say last year, but you know, two years. Ago. Uh, the like the show name Fargo reminds me of uh the American Financial Service Wells Fargo. Yeah, right. <laughs> their slogan is "Together We'll Go Far." And it's like, motherfuck, you guys have how much money available in advertising? Like, <laughs> that's the best you have. <laughs> yes. All right, I, I get that. I mean, finger licking good, mate. Um, just do it. You know, there's a lot of slogans out there that are pretty just but dude, regular. at least it's not your goddamn name. Like, <laughs> True. But you added one word to it, and then suddenly, like, that's your slogan. The... <laughs> Like, what if Burger King's slogan was just "We're Burger King"? Yeah, right. Dude, I'm by there. We're, 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 we're King Burger of King. Burgers. Yeah, we're King Burgers. That's it. You know, I'm Burger trying... King, King of Burgers. That's it, folks. That's a wrap. <laughs> That's it. What's what's some of the best ones out there? Best slogans. I bet there's some absolute belters out there. But but I, mean, I, fuck, I guess slogans. Subway. Think Lisa. different, mate. Think different course for Apple. Oh, Coca-Cola is open happiness? What? No, it's not. That's bullshit. I'm the word of that. Coca-Cola is a fucking bottle opening and then sipping it and saying, ah. Exactly. Oh, what's Pepsi's? Coca-Cola oh. is just a super spreader. Yeah, true. That's what I like is apparently Pepsi's. I don't... That was in 2020, but... I don't think... I, I just Did you know that? Do you guys have RC Cola in Scotland? RC Cola. Um, is that red cola? No. No. All right. No, Royal it's Crown like, Cola. I'm looking at it. No, I don't recognize it. What about red? Uh, like, I remember red cola growing up. Yeah. That was spelled with a K. Yeah, it's bar. Oh, that's, that's actually a Scottish brand. That's why. RC Cola is like, I don't know, Coca Cola adjacent. Right. But I. I didn't realize i've seen it forever like since i was a kid never drank it because who the fuck wants rc cola when you have coca-cola at your dispensal right i get you the the, but, the, the, uh, the fifth thing says the tragic history of rc cola you're going to tell me something <laughs> awful here <laughs> or do you I, like it's just that it's not exciting i guess yeah, the first line is, who drinks RC Cola anyway? Oh, That's like yeah, a... I see it. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize it stood for Royal Crown Cola until I watched Taxi Driver. Oh, right. Is it in Taxi Driver? Because mm-hmm. he gets he goes to the adult theater film, oh. adult film theater, and asks for a Coke. And she says, we got Royal Crown. Royal Crown. Okay, okay. There you are. So that just like shows how tragic it really is. We've suddenly been served there. I get it. Mm-hmm. That's how it is. I don't know if, like, if you had to, like, choose just one soda for the rest of your days, like, Pepsi. I don't... Pepsi. I mean, I don't... I don't drink soda that much, man. So it comes down to... I don't know, man. Like, honestly, thinking about it, like, even, like, Iron Brew is amazing. Um, <laughs> I, 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 could, I could tank Sprite, though, for years. Like, I love Sprite. Yeah, that's... It's super, I think that's, super like, refreshing. I don't know. A very, like good choice because it's gonna go with anything i think mm, mm. maybe less like a burger like who the fuck wants a burger and a spray me i've had that plenty of times <laughs> uh, sick freak <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking the, pepsi the color, the burger the color palettes mm. don't match up in my mind though mm. i mean if you were at a cinema or a movie theater like you'd say uh for, i think it's the most refreshing of sodas well a sprite Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think it's so it's so bright in your mouth. It's not like like I think Coke. I don't know. Coke makes me burp more it's than anything. Harsh, bro. Yes, it does. It yeah. Fucks up your intestines. Yeah, that's not not stonks, bro. I mean, Pepsi Max yeah. is good. Like, I don't know. It depends. Like, um, do you remember like cream soda and shit? Did you have that stuff growing mm-hmm. up? Like, uh, I'm trying to think of some other mental ones. There was like some crazy. Like uh, rhubarb and custard. I think there was one. The rhubarb <laughs> and custard one, uh, which is ridiculous. <laughs> Hold on, where is it? I want to see this. Uh, I think, see, that there's this... Yeah, rhubarb. I can't spell fucking rhubarb. Custard drink. I'm pretty sure there was, like, a, it's another bar one. 
Um, like bars, like a sounds... Scottish company that makes. Yeah, okay, is, I've yeah. never had a rhubarb before, but rhubarb and uh, custard just sounds a little spicy. Oh, it is. It's very. I'd say it's super sickly. It's like there's so much flavor going on. Um, sherbet lemon is a uh, part of that as well. Bar is just pure sugar. Oh. Like, um, honestly, uh, they, like they, they make they make gambaru, so they've got everything, you know. Oh god, yeah. Um, um, so my like soda drinking habits are very much in line with the rest of my vices. Like, I am really good about like abstaining for long periods of time, and then when I do fold, I go fucking crazy. Yeah, right. Like, I get you. I, I buy a twelve pack, drink it in a day. Buy another one the next day, drink it again. Fuck yeah! <laughs> and then I feel like shit, and I'm like, okay, it's time to stop. Yeah, I remember when Richie and I went to Ireland uh, for my birthday, which is it's actually fucking crazy. That was in 2020 because we travelled, we were fucking at clubs and pubs, everything. Like, we did everything that you're not supposed to do in 2020. Coffee into uh, people's mouths, it was right, awesome. dude? It was great, man. Swamp and spit people that we haven't never met. You know, it was great. Um, yeah. Dude, that was when that gay guy fucking hit on me. I'll tell you that story. It was like, no. the, um, uh, we were in this amazing club, right? Uh, it was good crack. Well, I say amazing. It was like, there was a band up by the window and stuff. It was good crack. It was just one of those pubs you walk in and you're like, fuck, everyone, no one really gives a fuck here. It's good crack. So, Richie and I started, uh, we had this American guy with us as well. He was from, Oh, uh, what I call... I forget. I, I used to call him his state name because I couldn't remember his name. I forgot his state name. Um, is, is that super obnoxious? <laughs> Imagine me calling you Kansas. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Kansas? You know... I just like, who are you talking to? Yeah, I think his name... I called him Oregon. It was Oregon. I called him Oregon. Yeah. So, yeah, that was it. Um, anyway, we were with him and, like, we started chatting up the, these girls that were at the table by themselves and there was a guy with them as well. Um, and then immediately once you can get... You know, talking to people, you can tell whenever someone's of another team. You know, there's something going on there. You know, it, like mainly comes down to the voice and the way he walks, right, and holds his hands and stuff. You can tell that he's more feminine than Richard I and Oregon. So I was fine. I wouldn't give a fuck. It was good, good crack for a bit, but then he just really turned on Richie and I for no reason, just out of nowhere. Like he was on bants and then just stopped and said, "Like, uh, like you stop talking to my girlfriends. You know, like really getting wide with us." I was going to put on the voice there, but I want to. Um, and then like just getting super wide, and we were like, "Yo, what the fuck? Settle down." So it's all right, you know. And his, his girlfriends were actually kind of looking at him like, "What? Why? Why are you being like so obnoxious here?" And he said, "They were just like, go get a drink." And so he did. He went get a drink, and one of his girlfriends went up with him, and then um. After that, like, uh, I went to go get a pint as well with Richie, and I came back. And then the guy came back with his drinks. I, I came back first. And then when he put them down, he then started trying to, like, grind up on me and really try and, like, push himself onto me. And I was just like, yo, bro, I I'm sorry. Like, I appreciate the affection, but I don't want this, right? And I was like, can you, like, go back, please? Right? And, I, like, at first he was like, okay. And then he just immediately came back at me and started really trying hard. And I, I just pushed him a little bit harder. And then he came back again. And I just full pushed him into the wall. <laughs> Like, as hard as I could, just full fucking smashed, right? And I was like, stop it. You know, I had to be very adamant. And I was like, fuck, imagine I was a ghetto and that was a boy yep. doing that to me. Like, th I was I was like, fuck, yep. that's assault, dude. That's like full on, you know, that's that would make a ghetto incredibly uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. And, I, and like, imagine a ghetto didn't have the strength to push the guy back, you know. Dude. Yeah, that's like, imagine that's just your fucking baseline experience. Like, yeah, I, I've really felt bad for girls that have experienced that. And like, I know plenty of dodgy guys that are don't have that filter of realizing they're making people uncomfortable. And like, I was like, fuck, man, that must kind of be somewhat what it's like. You know, I felt really taken aback. Like, fuck that, bro. So, yeah, that, that, that was my experience in that club in Ireland. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it was weird. I can't remember why I brought that up. Those are the kind of gentlemen that your your two friends from your childhood that showed you how to use BB guns turn into. Ah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not wrong actually though. But yeah, it's like that kind of like super short uh shirt um like dress shirt way you know um with really tight chinos and like but they can't pull it off <laughs> like you can. Because <laughs> yeah. like I don't know I'm I'm weird like you've seen how I dress and shit. I've changed a little bit now but like it's mainly just baggy clothes. I'm just a baggy clothes guy and. uh I don't, I don't really give a shit, dude. You're much more fashionable than me. But, like, I don't know, there's that fucking weird way where it's, like, a, a cheap dress shirt that's super short sleeves um, that tends to be the get-up of various uh, fan dans that I've grown up with. Um, I don't know why. The Chad dress. The Chad dress, yeah. They're trying real hard for it, real hard for it. The thing is, like, skin-tight shit just fucking weirds me out. Like, mm. bro, I'm not trying to see your whole ass, like, <laughs> everything else, dude, like... I get it. I don't get like what makes them think that 
like makes them more attractive. Like mm. I, I, showing off these gains, bro. Yeah, oh, fuck, man. I don't know. Um, I think uh, I was, as I've not given much of a fuck in my romantic life, I've been a mo- lot more comfortable in just how I am, and I become a better person for it. Like if I'd cared uh, too much about that, because I saw Richard do that a lot. Like he used to wear that <laughs> and stuff, and I think uh, he's been like, through a lot of slog. <laughs> That's just like uh, like club goer meta at that point. Right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, like you're doing it because you see other people doing it, mm. and it's like, hey, dude, they're pulling chicks. Like, yeah, for sure. I I get you. I don't know. I just I remember quite like distinctly just deciding to fall out of that. I was like, I don't want to be part of these guys anymore. You know, they're just not doing anything interesting. They're only no. thinking about girls. They're not being interesting. You know, just like actual, I'm not I'm not looking for someone that's so fucking ambitious that they're, you know, jumping off squirrel suits off of mountains and shit. I'm not looking necessarily for that. That's cool as fuck, I. But like, just something good, something that has a bit more forward thinking, you know, rather than just shag, wed, and then kids, and then house, and then a car I can't pay for. Like, I, you know, that's like a, such a big thing. And it just, I don't know, I just fell out of that quite quickly. Yeah. Like, fuck that, dude. I want to do something that I can actually talk about that's interesting, you know? (laughs) One thing that kills me is um, people who, like, uh, you live in a certain area and then you try to clown on the people who live around you. Like, Mm. dude, why are you making fun of people for doing what makes them comfortable? Like, who wants to just stick out like a sore thumb amongst their friends? Well... be original, bro, but it's also like, okay, yeah, but you don't have to be. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Like, it, the people just try so hard to fit into, like, a compartment of uh, what's going on, like, around them. Like, I, I don't know. It just it scares me because I've seen a lot of people stay in the same place. Like, um, I yes. I mean, maybe they're super fucking happy with the three kids and the mortgage they can't pay for. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe they are. Maybe, or maybe they can pay for that mortgage and they're like, gloriously happy and they have lots of money and... You know, they, they like their car and they adore pairing, paying it off and I don't know. But I, I feel like there's so much of that that, like, you don't have to, like, maybe you have enough shit going on in your life where you don't want to think about, like, oh, maybe there is something better out there for me. Like, right. you're just going to, like, I think a lot of people have the mentality of hungering down and, like, yeah. you know, playing the cards you've been dealt. I, I just think that's such a waste when you got internet in your hands, man. Like, there's so much extra stuff you well, can... Well, not utilize. everybody is as internet savvy as us, my friends. Like, I know, but I don't think I am internet savvy. I just think I'm... I don't know. I, I suppose well, maybe dude, I those are somewhere. the people who are like, oh, you fucking nerd, you're on the internet? Like, <laughs> those are the people, right? Yeah, like, I suppose. They've fully fucking invested into their real-life prospects. Like, Yeah. I mean, how much do you heavily use Facebook still? Um, my sole purpose of scrolling Facebook these days is to clown on the like the people from my hometown. Okay, good shit. Right, <laughs> I've seen some but, of your like, comments I, actually earlier. Yeah, I I just I passive aggressively comment when I get too fed up. Okay, yeah. so I made a rule where like I wasn't gonna post if I didn't have anything good to say. Okay, because if I didn't, I would only be spewing all of the shit that I hate in this world. <laughs> yes, I get that. <laughs> Yeah, I understand. Like, yeah, for yeah sure. nobody gets on fucking social media to just like see that shit. Yeah, and if you do, bro, <laughs> check your follower list. Fucking open the windows, air some shit out, dude. Like, yeah, you don't. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to live with that kind of negativity in your no, life man. because it's just gonna continue to fucking pull up, and that's gonna be the only thing you find comfort in. Bro, I've unfollowed so many streamers, or at least muted them um, on Twitter and stuff, because they just continually dude. always complain about the same shit, and like never mm-hmm. were looking for a fix to it. Um, I actually, they, yep. like, there was a thing uh, I was talking about earlier, and it was just like, people, um, I understand, like, they are utilizing things that happen for content, but always making a troll be content makes people only see you as a troll finder and that you're only trying to like exacerbate the problem rather than actually remedy it you know if it's that much of a problem get a fucking therapist dude yeah or i don't know just don't people aren't your punching bag for your emotional problems yeah yeah there's yeah exactly I just, I can understand once or twice like making fun of someone. I, I rip the piss out of Glaswegians that come in and think they're a young team. And I'm just like, <laughs> fuck off, wanks, you're on Twitch, you're not in the streets yet. Yeah. You know, like, you know, and yeah. like, I don't know, just little things like that. Or 
It's like, yeah, we've got the Govan Hill Massive in here. You know, like, you've ripped the piss at them. Like, there's something you can just say that's, like, I don't know, like, you just turn it into banter. Instead of, like, going like, oh my god, how do you do this? And then you go on, like, a whole fucking tangent about why it's wrong and politically incorrect. It's like, fuck off, man, it's so much effort. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't, I don't like that. It Um, just, maybe I'm a better old man already, but it is what it is. (laughs) My dad used to say, uh, you don't uh, wrestle with a pig because you both get dirty and the pig likes it. Oh, that's it. There's another other thing as well. Like you don't argue with a fool because he'll bring you down to his level and then beat you with experience. There's mm-hmm. that as well. Yeah, I like, I like the pig Dude, one though. Yeah, but... it's definitely gotten to the point of social media though, where if I see somebody's avatar, I scroll right past it. Like, <laughs> let my eyes fucking gloss over. Don't <laughs> register a word of what they said and go right to the next one. <laughs> Yeah. And it's like, dude, <laughs> I don't know how you can base your personality on being like upset or disappointed. Like, mm. dude, if yeah. world, if like living is that painful for you, like find different outlets, dude. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's promoting what you hate instead of preaching what you love or like finding something interesting that you can focus dude, yourself into. It's to the point where like you're basing your personality on being like upset with the world. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to be that person. Like, it's no. not fucking interesting. Like, it's not a way to live. Like, no. Oh, dude, I was so fucking shitty and down on Twitter today. Like, <laughs> what do you get from that? Yeah, for sure. I, I remember one of my good mates used to always listen to, like, Ben Shapiro and um, Jeremy Peterson. Is it Jeremy Peterson? Jordan? Jordan Peterson? Uh, like, some, some of it's all right, right? But a lot of that shit is so negative and makes you, like, question everything and think you become a misogynist. and like. But he just used to... I remember I, I lived with him, and he used to always play it. I was like... Bro, I let you, I I said this once. I was like, "Look, you just have to stop. You're becoming an absolute arse to be with." <laughs> you know, just the way you think now is going to be completely changed because of how much you ingest of these people and these mindsets yeah. and these thoughts. And like, uh, he did. It was actually took it quite a heart. And then in time, he switched off it and he he actually thanked me, uh, which was I was really saying about. I was like, "Fuck!" I mean, I didn't mean it as like you know some groundbreaking change in you, but you know, he really felt that way. He's like, "Fuck!" I have become a bit of you know. A weird champ guy. Oh, can I even say weird champ now, man? Um, but for weird guy, um, you know, he just he Dude, felt okay. like he wasn't. He was falling apart. So I, I'm gonna take a stand here. We can't let alt right dickheads steal our memes, dude. No, I know, no, no, no. It's in our it's a vocabulary, man. Like I, 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 I say that. Get weird, champ. You don't get put. No, fuck you, dude. No, he doesn't stake it all. Yeah, that's what I said. I said that we need to steal his legacy, so it has to become ours, like for mm-hmm. the greater good. Like, uh, like his saying, like Pog you and just Pog and Poggies and like anything like that. Like, you're gonna say it. And weird, champ. I've, I saw a fucking tweet. Who knows if it was serious or not? But they're like asking, like, is Poggers racist because it's Pepe? Like, nah. shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah, I know. Obviously not. It's yeah. It's it's I don't know. It's letting them win. Yeah. It's it's like it goes against everything that people try and present that they're you know they're they're full of free speech and the right thing to do. Um, but when it comes down to actually having a strong back, they bend to the wrongness of the right. It doesn't necessarily, not necessarily the right, but just someone being a cunt. Um, and you know like letting them steal something that so many people use for joy and just good crack. You know, mm-hmm. like same pog and just like I don't know big pog. Like that's always a thing. You know, and I remember that being a funny thing. Like you'd accidentally say it outside of Twitch, so people would be like, "What? <laughs> What's a fog?" Yeah. You know, and you'd be like, "Oh shit!" Like you realize how much it meant to you, and like in your regular vocabulary, you can't just let that oh guy steal God. it. You know. Yeah. Speaking of, like, uh, I actually have to go here in thirteen minutes. No, for, that's cool. For, that's cool. Uh, but uh, like, I was playing, you know, with my Dungeons and Dragons group, and we're playing with um, my friend's brother and his old law school friend, and so like. These people are like, I don't know, a good five to 15 years older than me. And like, <laughs> I like caught myself so many times of just saying like poggers, <laughs> like it's about to leave my mouth. And I'm like, I am going to sound like a complete dumbass if I go to the <laughs> <laughs> That's it, dude. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I regularly use them as words. And like, it takes me a second to, to remember what else you'd say. Like for for Pog uh, Champ, you just I say love, brilliant or something, you know. But yeah, sometimes I you could have changed. Poggers in the most disarming way possible. <laughs> Poggers, Poggers. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, just, I don't know. It's... I never realised how big a thing it was, but it's just vocabulary, like, it changes. It shows you how easily um, extra language can go into your everyday speech, you know? Wait, is it <laughs> Your vernacular. The, is it in the... Dictionary? The, yeah. I don't know, probably. Probably some dictionary, certainly urban, but I don't know. It's on dictionary.com. Wow. Is it on the... What is it, Miriam? Webster? Webster, yeah. Potentially. I think poggers might be... Nope. No. I mean, Pog Champ? I mean, just Pog. I think Pog itself, like POG, is just a lot a lot more known. Most likely. <laughs> but no, it's it, it's good, man. Like, there's so much of that. Uh, Like, the, they think of, a, like, the, the Pog you off, or Pog off. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think other ones that are just, like, prevalent. I mean, like, put, like, I'm... Pog Champ. Um, mm -hmm. What is, like, Pog O? Like, when he's kind of just looking at the camera, like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, there's so much of that that's just good. Um, and it, it, what are we it without, says so much. What are we without Weird Champ, man? Right? Bro, I mean, that's coming clutch. I mean, like, po see, when I first saw Pause Champ, I remember that moment. It was in Jericho's stream, um, and he was doing something that was that had a bit of anticipation, and the entire chat put Pause Champ then uh, an ellipsis, so three dots. And I was like, oh my god, what is this mode? Because it, it, it summed up what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is so perfect, Pause you know? Because, like, I actually feel if someone doesn't have a Pog U in their chat, um, it feels like you can't really emote properly, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. There's such a fucking BTTV meta. Dude. Yeah, for sure. It's it's not because like if I can only it's weird as well. Like I don't know. Like they removed a bunch of them, so I don't know if you can do it anymore. Um, but you can oh. you can put pog, you can put pogi, but I don't know if you can put pog you. I remember it was like weird champ, pause champ, pog you. I think got taken away. I was it yeah, it's right. There's heart you. Um, so I'm looking for pog on Merriam Webster, and right. apparently there's a word called pogamagan, which is pogamagan. <laughs> what does it mean? Uh, a club used as a weapon or ceremonial object by various American Indian people. Oh my god! Consisted in the Great Lakes region of a flat curved cub with a knobbed head. That is fucking amazing, Pogamogan. Dude, Pogamogan. Pogamogan. Dude, that's that's it. That, that's that's the word. Pogamogan. It is. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> yeah, a club used as a weapon or ceremonial object by various American Indian people. Let's go. Oh, it looks sick yeah. as well. Bra. Is that like a foot okay. or like a femur bone or some shit? What is that? I don't know. A knobbed head. There's some animal bone, right? Dunk. Unreal. It's just a pogamogan, dude. Pogamogan, dude. Pogamogan. Well, that, that, that's the word of the podcast, I think. I reckon that's... Uh, put put pogamogan in the comments if you've got all the all the way through here, you know? <laughs> that's the True. best way to get it out. In fact, put it in the Discord. That's how I was thinking about this. It's a great way to, like, promote the Discord. If you put it in the Discord first, you know? Um, in time, mm -hmm. we can grow up from that. I think so. Is there anything else you want to round off on, Mr. True Savory, Mr. Roden the Rat King, whatever you want to be known uh, as? Uh, it's been wonderful to have you as the first my, guest. Shout out to my mother. I love her very much. Oh, beautiful. Uh, she's, so well. she, she's, she's watching the Chiefs game right now, I'm sure. Oh, amazing. Amazing. I, I, obviously, you're going to let her listen to this, the entirety of it. Everything. Oh, of course. Yeah, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Can you like uh, live stream when she's watching it for me? Like, so I can... yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any self incriminating things? Um, we're merely works of fiction, mother. Exactly. Uh, oh, it's just all for content I'm, and I'm, entertainment purposes. I'm a good Christian boy. Exactly. I, I've never thought anything different. There you are, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening to True and I talking some absolute pish, as we regularly do, but it's in a more recorded sense today. And it's, it's better, you know? I like that. That, that was our first guest. So, uh, terribly sorry if you were expecting an interview-esque kind of way. I don't think I'll ever do that. I think I'm always a conversationalist when it comes down to it. Um, it's more just to get to have someone else to be on here and we can kind of chill out together um, and just be like a group, you know. I don't know if you can hear my cat. Can you hear my cat? Hear him? Listen? Hear him? <laughs> my little baby, my little cat's on me right now. Um, but thank you so much for listening. If you have, um, remember the word of the day is, oh Jesus, what is it? Pogmog, Pogmogan. Pogmogan. Yeah, Pogamogan. So Pogamogan to you and Pogamogan to us all. Uh, do enjoy yourselves tonight, uh, this morning or this afternoon. Don't step on the fucking keyboard, cat. Uh, <laughs> Slanjava and don't be a cunt. Thank you very much for being here. Big love. Bye-bye.